Hey there YouTube, so we're working on the car today. We're going to do a uh, wheel bearing, we're going to do an alignment. I got the tool here to do the alignment, the dream stick. I'm going to try to figure out how to use that. I tried to hood, put it up to the wheel, I'm going to need to pull up some instructions on it. i got to figure out how to attach it to the wheel. But the wheel bearing is going to be pretty straightforward, I'm going to go ahead and jack up the car and take the wheel off and then we'll meet you back over there. Alright, so we're back down at the, the brake rotor. Um, let me show you, show you what we got here. So basically, to take this apart, you got your upper ball joint here, which is two bolts. I believe that's two bolts holding them cover over the nut. Yeah, this should be pretty easy to replace or to pull out of there. So we're basically just going to break the taper on this upper ball joint. There's another ball joint down down here underneath. Underneath here. We're going to take off this tie rod end here and remove the brake caliper. Then we'll take this big nut off the end of the CV axle and the whole knuckle will come off. It's really not too bad. So but here's the bearing, this new wheel bearing, and it actually sits right behind here, right in the middle. The CV axle actually goes through the middle of here, and it clamps to it, but I'll explain all that as we get further into here. So I'm going to go ahead and start by taking off this brake caliper. We got the caliper off, sitting on top of the uh, rotor to make sure we don't have any strain on the brake hose. I'm going to go ahead and take this, since we are taking the whole knuckle off, I'm going to go ahead and take off this uh, hold down point for the, for the hose. That way it's not attached to the knuckle in any way, so we don't have to fool with it later. you got to find a, in my case, I can... Kind of hang them over the, hang it over a piece of the suspension over here. Let's go ahead and take the caliper bracket off now, just so we can get the rotor out of the way. Now here's something you may or may not have ever heard of for the new viewers. That is called a castle nut. You might be able to tell. It has a cotter pin that goes through it. So, take the cotter pin out. Then you loosen the nut. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this nut until it's about to the end of the stud. I'm actually going to tap on this iron knuckle here and it's going to break the taper and then you take the nut off and the whole thing just drops off of this upper control on here so that's what I'm doing right now
This might seem a little different to you, but it doesn't damage the iron. And what it does is it shocks that taper into breaking loose. It might only take a couple of hits. Or it might take more. goes. Sometimes they're a little stubborn. The tie rod end back here, I can't really show you because it's tucked away, but it's the same situation. Alright, so we got the tie rod end off. A little bit of a fight. Alright, so that's not, that nut's not going to be doing all that great. I have to clean that up on the grinder, but finally got the ball joint loose. I did what I said I wasn't going to do and hit that stud. As you can see, I put upward force on it. Kind of helped me out a little bit. Well, maybe not. Maybe only just a hair. Let's see what happens. There'll probably still be some crackling wood and all that, which I don't care about. But, hey, look at that. I can still set it up at the same height. Cool. Cool. This is going to be much safer because it's not going to want to. Uh, kind of explode. It's going to stay fastened together because it has bolts fastened it together. Sometimes you just got to use the right tool for the job. This is going to really tear up the backing plate so once it bottoms against the spindle and everything self-centers and all that, I should be doing a lot better. There it goes. Yeah. Good thing I brought that out because I'm going to need it again to take the. Uh, I'll show you what happened. This, this happens a lot on these. We still have the inner race for 
the outside portion. But that big bang was everything coming apart. That's usually how it works. It scares the crap out of you, but it's done. As you can see, we got the bearing pretty well where it's ready to come out. There's a snap ring in here that I gotta remove and then this bearing presses straight out. So, yeah, we're making some progress now. I'm gonna go try to take care of some of this stuff here and not, uh, then I'll jump back. You can see once it goes bang, everything starts moving a lot easier because it just breaks that bond that it had. That bond that's been there for so long. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get a socket that fits down in here. And I'm going to use my new bearing as a guide to see what fits through it. That's what I should have done to begin with. So be back. So I'm using like a 27 millimeter socket or something like that. Here we go. It should actually come out pretty easy because it already popped. Let me make sure this socket's centered in there. Yep. And there's that. So we got the hard part done. Well, for the most part. This is probably the trickiest part of the whole deal is jigging this up to get it to work. The other, you know, the other half of it's pretty simple. But, um, you know, you can see there's the thing there. And I am going to try to clean this up and figure out where the wear happened. It kind of looks like some brunelling. I'm going to clean this up too so it slides in a little easier in the new bearing. to take this big old snap ring out of here and then what we're going to do is put the bearing splitter on the bottom of the face of this here with a real big socket put it around the outside of here and push the bearing out so again this is the easy part you can go get snap ring pliers and come do that a really big snap ring too. Hopefully it doesn't have a whole bunch of tension on it. Uh, engage your safety squints. I guess what I'm going to do is kind of peel this snap ring out and see if it'll fling itself across the room. didn't fling it, but it came out nice and easy. Alright, so the 30 millimeters is good. Alright, where is the pipe? 
bearing's just gonna shoot out on the floor once it gets out. And with the socket too. Just to minimize noise, I'm gonna put a piece of foam down there. So it just kinda bounces. Actually, it won't be that bad. What I can do is I can put the arbor plate here, and I can set up the bearing just flat on its face for now, just to minimize the uh, distance here. I can use a small block of wood. No, it's not up high enough. Hmm. Let's put this metal across there. Did you just notice it's self center? They have a tendency to do that. And then it probably just did it again. When you got a real thick cast iron housing like that, it's very forgiving. The aluminum stuff's not. And we've bottomed out. not fully installed, but now I should be able to fit a socket underneath it to finish the job. Again, I'll just push against the middle. It didn't take nothing to put that in. I actually just did it with my fingers and not even using the, the handle. That's sufficiently bottomed out. Should be able to put the snap ring back in. Press the hub in until it bottoms. And then reverse the process. Alright, now you can see the snap ring groove is exposed. Which means the bearing is fully seated. Put it back in. The key to this whole thing was a bearing splitter. Because I was going to be fighting with it for a while otherwise.
really don't want to push against the bearing without something behind it because it does uh it might push the other side out. You gotta make sure you're driving it in pretty square. And you have to so I've got the 30 millimeter socket up against the back inner race. That way I'm kind of squeezing them together. as the hub goes in the in between them in the middle. Right, let's make it happen, Captain. Let's free float in the middle there. tell it's still free floating even with pressure on it because all we're doing is pushing those inner races together and it's not really putting pressure on the ball bearings or anything to do with the outer race. And once this thing bottoms out it should still be free moving. I almost thought I forgot the snap ring. See? It bottomed out. Make sure we're good. No play, spins freely, it looks good, we'll put this Alright, so I kind of jumped the gun a little bit, went ahead and put the, uh, the tie rod back on, upper ball joint, went ahead and ground the nut where I mushroomed it for the bottom, ball joint, where is that stud at? Ball joint not even in there? It's not possible. Oh. We're gonna put this in here. Good, the threads are still decent. Should be able to zip that up on there. Good. Um go ahead. I don't know exactly where the cotter pin hole is, but that taper is seated fully. Alright, so I found the cotter pins, got one of them installed. I'm going to put this little, little cover piece over the bottom of that stud there.
All right, so I've got all the brakes hooked back up. I'll have to pump the brakes before I pull it out, but that should be all I need to set them again. Um, I've got the upper and lower ball joints on. Got all the little brackets and everything back hooked back up. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this wheel out because it has mud and stuff in it. So I'm going to clean the inside of this wheel out and then put it back on and then we'll get to set the toe on this thing. Alright, so I've got everything taken care of, everything's done. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set up the alignment, put uh, the strings and stuff. So the basis of this is the string method, which if you haven't heard about it, just look it up. You're basically just setting up two strings down either side, down one down each side of the car, and you line it up using that. So if you're going to string, when you have a string pulled tight, it's completely straight. And what I'm going to do, I guess I'm going to measure off of the inside of, I don't know if you can see it. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to start doing this. But there's a, there's a lip on the inside of the wheel. I'm going to measure from there out and that'll give me, I'm going to get it really close, but I'm going to measure from there out. And I looked it up because I was going to try to use this setup to do camber and caster. I found out, I, I really thought that these cars from the factory had camber adjustment, but they only have toe. So we're just going to have to set the toe and let it go because that's your only option here. Alright, so I'm going to set this up and then I'm going to come back and show you what I got going on. Alright, so I want to jump back in here and give some preliminaries. I've basically got this set up to where from the inside of the hub to the string, I've got inch and five eighths on front and rear. And to start with, I've got inch and an eighth and seven eighths. So that'd be quarter inch, right? I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna set up the other side. I'm gonna get the other numbers, and then I'll know how bad it is or how good it is. Maybe we'll see. I did touch the adjustments slightly just to make sure they were free. So I'll have to go back and make sure everything's good, and I'll have to keep checking to make sure the steering wheel's straight during the whole process too, because I don't want to be driving crooked. So I'm gonna go set up the other side and then come back.
I'm gonna go tighten up that other side, double check it, and I think we're done. So I'm gonna go drive it, give you a recap, let you know what we got. All right, so it's been a few days. I actually drove the car for about a week. I forgot to come back and do a little video to let you know how the alignment turned out, but it turned out great. I was surprised. It's the first time I've done a string type alignment like that, and the it, the wheel is straight. It seems to be tracking straight. I don't. I have a lot less vibration in the wheel. I think whatever's left is just due to these older tires. That'll get corrected later. I might get some newer tires later, but that's neither here nor there. So I couldn't really adjust camber caster, like I said, because I don't have camber kit on this car. I didn't realize there was no adjustment for it. I assumed there was, but there is not. But uh, there's going to be, I'm not going to be doing any videos for a couple weeks because I'm going on a trip. So that's why I was doing all this work to the car and getting it ready for it. So it's not going to be chewing through tires, getting bad gas mileage, all that nonsense that comes with your car not driving properly. I'm really curious to see what kind of gas mileage it gets. The last road trip I went on, I had the cruise set at about 80 and it got 36 average for the whole trip. So I'm expecting to see that or better. Hopefully better. That'd be really cool. Like if I was pushing 38, 40 miles a gallon in a 29-year-old car. I had to do some math there. It's a 29-year-old car with somewhere between 250 and 300,000 miles on it. I think uh, the odometer stopped at one point during its life. It says 242. But supposedly it has more than that. So we'll just say 250 plus. <laughs> it's all got a lot of miles on it either way. So... 36 is already very impressive for, for a vehicle with this high mileage and not being like the gas mileage version. It's the, the higher trim level, so it being an EX. But it does very well. I think it's really comfortable on road trips. It gets good mileage. It's a nice uh, car to ride in. But I'll probably come back after the trip and let you know what happens. And we'll, you know, if I need to correct anything or if we need to make any improvements then we'll do that so maybe we'll have some more video opportunities after the trip but uh, for now I think the car is is done it's ready to go you can see I've already started packing so that's gonna go ahead and wrap up the wheel bearing and alignment video so uh, let me know what you think you know what to do like comment subscribe and I'll see you next time